So, Heinemann Higher, straight line, exercise 1 question 3. You've got a triangle ABC with the vertices given. Question part A says, show its isosceles. Well, there's a couple of ways you could do that. Since B and C have got the same Y coordinate, that means that BC is horizontal. So the altitude from A, which would be vertical in this case, if that altitude hit the base in the midpoint, in other words, if the altitude was the perpendicular bisector of the base, then you would have an isosceles triangle, because that's one of the features of it. And it is. 1 plus 7, the average of that, 8 divided by 2 is 4. That's at 4. So that does bisect the base. The only other thing is that also applies to equilateral triangles. And to show it wasn't equilateral, you'd have to use this feature of the coordinates, because an equilateral triangle can't have coordinates which involve integral points. Or rather, all so integral we'll do it the points. So we'll find the lengths of the sides and show that two of the sides, but not all three, are the same. So that's just what you would call the distance formula. Work at the length of AB. Instead of AB equals in the big square root, just work at AB squared. So that would just be using the little right angle triangle that would form going from B to A. The difference in X, the difference in Y. I think I'll just write difference in X, difference in Y squared. So, difference in X's. So that's going to be, it doesn't matter which way around because I'm squaring, but I tend to always go, if it goes AB, I'll do B minus A. So I've got 2 minus, sorry, 1 minus 4, doesn't matter, plus 2 minus 8 for the difference in the y's. So I've got negative 3 squared plus negative 6 squared, that's 9 and 36, that's 45. Then I'll work out AC squared exactly the same way. The difference in the x's and the difference in the y's. So I've got difference in the x's, 7 take away 4. Whoops, that's a bit messy. 2 take away 8. So that gives me 3 squared and negative 6 squared, which is again 9 plus 36, which is 45. Now, if the squares are the same, the square roots are the same. So to compare them all, I can compare their squares. So one thing left is BC. But you don't need to use Pythagoras for BC because it's a horizontal line. You only use Pythagoras with sloping lines. So the distance from B to C you can state straight away. It goes from, since it's this, it goes from 1 to 7, so it's going to be 7 minus 1. Or if I want to square it, just to compare the squares. So that means I've got 6 squared, which is 36. And then you can make a statement. I want something like these. Since, now, AB is equal to AC, but it's not equal to BC, even though I've got the squares. The squares are the same, the square roots are the same. That means that two sides are the same. That means that triangle ABC is isosceles. Right. And not equilateral. Right, that's the first bit. So part B. First of all, the altitudes AD, so let me draw it in, in the sketch. So altitude means it goes straight to the opposite side at right angles, and it gives a name for the foot of the altitude. So that's called D. And BE, Again, that altitude's got a name, so I'll call that E. Intersector H, so the point of intersection's got a name. If they didn't, you would have given them yourself anyway. And what you've got to do, you've got to find the coordinates of H, which means finding the equations of AB, sorry, AD and BE, and then getting the point of intersection. Right, what we'll do, we'll do AD first of all. Well, for AD, I've got this, I'll need the equation of BC. There's various things. I've mentioned horizontal and vertical, but I'll go through it this way. BC, I want its gradient. Because AD is going to have the perpendicular gradient. So BC is going to be the difference in Y over the difference in X. I know you can write Y2 minus Y1, but that just means the difference in them. I prefer to write that because it looks more like the derivative that you get later on for the inst instantaneous gradients. A is going to be Difference in y, 2, me, 2 take away 2. Difference in x, 7 take away 1. Now immediately that gives you a 0. And as soon as you've got a 0, that means that bc is horizontal. As soon as you've got a gradient with a 0 in either of the parts, you know it's either horizontal or vertical. In which case it's perpendicular will be vertical or horizontal. And they've got very simple names. 
So BC is horizontal, which means that AD is vertical. And a vertical line has got an equation like constant x, x equals AD is vertical, which means that for AD, x is always the same. It's always the same, so it'll be the same as any particular point like that, 4, so x equals 4. That would be the equation of AD, a line of constant x, a vertical line. I'll give it a name, 1. Now I want to do the same for BE. So, for BE, I should really have, so I'm going to put BE, I don't know why I put that down there, I should really have put AD, since that's what the purpose of the whole thing was. Now, for BE, I want the gradient of the line that's perpendicular to, I want the gradient of AC. So that'll be the difference in Y over the difference in X. Now with the dagger at the side, you're not likely to go wrong. If you were just reading it from a question, it might be safer putting down the two points, which point goes to which point. But it's quite safe here. AC, so the Y coordinate is 2 take away 8, and the X coordinate is 7 take away 4. And don't mix them up, make sure you keep them in the same order. Start with this one, and then take away those ones. So it's going to be negative 6 over 3, which is negative 2. And that looks about right from the diagram. Negative down, 2, steep down. Which means that the gradient of BE, I've written that too big, gradient of BE will be the negative of the reciprocal of it. They have to multiply to get negative 1. So the gradient of BE is a half. So for BE then, I can use that finder equation. Y minus B equals MX minus A. Now quite often, the same as here, when you're working out a gradient, sometimes it's safer to put the two points side by side in case there's points all over the place and gradients all over the place and you pick the wrong ones. It takes longer, of course, there's a time penalty involved here. So I could put in a note, the gradient's a half, that's right, up there, shallow, and it goes through the point 1, 2, and then feed that in. Y minus the Y coordinate is the gradient times x minus the x coordinate. Take that 2 cross and multiply. 2y minus 4 is just 1 that's left to multiply them, x minus 1, and then rearrange that into any form you're happy with. Well, ideally, I would like y equals mx plus c, because that's perfect for substitution. You can use it in eliminations if you like, and it also shows you what the line looks like. But a good compromise is just to go for this, unless it's specifically asked for a particular form, which generally you wouldn't need. It's just 2y equals x, and that'll be plus 4, so plus 3. I'll call that equation 2. That's a good compromise form. It's almost like y equals mx plus c, but it involves integers. Right, so the point h. Where's the point h? Well, h is where the two of them cross. So that means I'm going to substitute one equation into the other. So I'll do that. Substitute 1 in 2. 2 being the more complicated equation. 1 getting used for the substitution. That means I write down equation 2. Only when I get to the variable I'm substituting for, I carry out the substitution. And I could just put 4. I think I'll put the wee placeholder there for it. <coughs> so I've got 4 plus 3. You would certainly do that if there was an expression going in. But it's quite handy just to show that that's what's been put into it. It's like a wee splash that's been formed as it's been dropped in. Right, which means that 2y equals 7, so y equals um, 3 and a half. But I don't need to work out what x is, because x is 4 throughout the line, which means h is the point 4, 3 and a half. You can leave it as up in 2 as you like. But I know I can see the next bit, I'm going to be doing some subtraction, so I'd rather have mixed numbers. So, second bit. Hence show that H lies a quarter of the way up DA. Well, I've just found the coordinates of H. I know the coordinates of A. I should really get the coordinates of D. Well, D is going to be the midpoint of BC. D is going to be midpoint of BC. Which means D is going to be the average of the X coordinates and the average of the Y coordinates. So, the what point did that make? So that's 1 plus 7 up in 2, and obviously 2 plus 2, I'll just write it down anyway, even though you know the answer is 2. So D is going to be the point, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 2. Now since it's asking for the fraction of the way, I'll be wanting distances. 
but it's a vertical line, so there's no Pythagoras involved. It's just straightforward subtraction of y coordinates because all these points, a, h, and d, have all got x equal to 4. So it's just the y coordinates, it's a vertical distance that will give me the distances. So I want the distance AD. Well, that's simple because it's just the difference in the y coordinates. So that's going to be 8 because A is up at height 8. Take away 2 because D is up at height 2. So the distance from A to D is 6 units. I want the distance from, <coughs> so since it says show it's a quarter of the way up, I want HD rather than AH. So HD or DH, whichever you like. DH is going to be, it's a vertical line, so it's just the difference in the y coordinates. So it'll be three and a half. Take away D's at two. So that's a distance, that's a difference of one and a half. And then quite simply after that, oh, I'm dead. So it's a quarter of the way. That means what fraction is that? What fraction is DH of AD? Well, it's one and a half out of six. That's a complex fraction. Multiply it to turn it into whole numbers over whole numbers. So doubling everything, 3 upon 12. Then cancelling by 3, so that's a quarter. So that means it's a quarter of the way up. So that means that HD is a quarter of AD. Or if you like, just to write it down the way they've got it, H is one quarter up from D to A, or for the exact wording, or however it was worded. Whoops, there we go. Right, that was question three.